Good morning. Thanks, Tish, so much for that. I just wanted to take a quick second this morning to thank everyone on the board and part of the committee for this inaugural event. I know we here at PwC Public Sector are exceptionally proud to support INSYS first in the new IC, empowering women and engaging men. But I'm also so thrilled to see so many organizations from industry and academia supporting this important event today. And for those of you attending who work with or for one of these organizations, you should be exceptionally proud of your affiliation with them. So as I just mentioned, the title of today's event is called The New IC, Empowering Women and Engaging Men. To help an organization begin a new journey, pursue a vision, or challenge status quo, you need the right leader. Someone who will give clear guidance on the strategy and the direction of the group is undertaking to get there. Someone who will be radically candid in their feedback when things are going off course, but also be your biggest fan when you reach milestones big and small, and maybe give you a really good hug. So it, as we discuss our new IC today, it is perfect that we have such a leader with us this AM to kick off this event. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce this morning's keynote speaker, the Honorable Sue Gordon, Principal Deputy Director of National Intelligence. Sue assumed her role as PPDNI in August 2017. In this capacity, she focuses on intelligence integration across the IC, expanding outreach and partnerships, and driving innovation. Prior to joining the ODNI, she was the Deputy Director of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, driving NGA's transformation to meet the challenges of the 21st Century Intelligence Agency. Sue came to NGA after 27 years at the Central Intelligence Agency. She joined the CIA in 1980 as an analyst in the Office of Scientific and Weapons Research. She went on to hold senior executive positions in, at the time, all four agency directorates. She has received many honors for her extraordinary public service, including the Presidential Rank Award at the Distinguished Level. And to many in this space, she is one of our biggest cheerleaders. Please join me in welcoming Sue Gordon to the podium. Wow, good morning. How awesome is this, right? And hey, real quick, Gina Haspel. All the, I want every positive energy going out there, but wow, she did such a great job at her confirmation hearing, kind of demonstrating all the attributes that we talk about, you know, strong, smart, um, engaged. My favorite thing about Gina is she was in the hearing exactly as she promised to be, which is, um, engaged, committed, and showing her back when she, you know, putting, you know, standing up and being strong and getting her back up when she needed to, but always respectfully. I just, I'm so excited uh, about her. Um, Tish, um, Nicole, uh, Chuck, Insa, you all, um, thanks for letting me come and play. Um, I am so excited about this conversation. I think it's really important for us to have. Um, I'm honored to be in the presence of, did you all look at who's speaking today? Holy, no, so it seriously is like a who's who of, of not only my friends, which means I'm old, but, <laughs> but oh, man, everyone, Karen, Megan, Tish, Ellen, Carrie, Janice, Diet, Mandy, Rhonda, Tony, John, Nicole, I mean, Mary Legere, Suzanne Kelly, Lynn Dougal, holy smokes. Um, so I'm also bitter um, that, I have, that I have a day job and I can't stay um, the whole day to bask in their wisdom um, and think their thoughts. But luckily, I see film, and so I'll be able to follow up. Um, today, I was going to share thoughts with you on three topics, kind of the theme of here, but my take on it. Um, the first is um, leadership now. Um, uh, and both the responsibilities and the opportunities that come with that. Um, leading as a woman um, and the importance of men, which could have just a period after it, but actually um, in terms of a, as leaders and as allies. Um, I'm going to uh, do something that the book says you should never do, and that's I'm going to apologize in advance for my remarks. Like, I, I think that if I, if I had spent enough time 
there are some really good kernels of ideas in here, but they may not be well connected and they may not be as articulate as I like. So what I ask you to do is, don't judge me, but actually <laughs> consider the possibility that there are some ideas here that you can, we can work on as you listen to the panels, because I think there are some ideas here that we can use um, in order to help the nation. Because that's what, while there's all sorts of good stuff that we can do in terms of personal development, all sorts of great places that we can take ourselves, becoming all that we are, um, taking advantage of all the talents in the room, at the end of the day, the reason, Tish and Chuck, why I answer every call that you make is I think that one of the exciting things about INSA is what you're focused on, which is intelligence and national security. And I think that's especially important now. So that's, you're going to forgive me because I'm trying to help that. OK, topic number one, leadership now. Um, these are fraught, complex, and dynamic times. Um, What's exciting about them is that we almost have universal awareness that we need to do something. Um, there's this aliveness that I feel in the nation now and in our community. It, it's uncomfortable, but man, it's vibrant. And it is this unifying vision that we have to do something in order to ensure that our nation and that our community continue to deliver what they were meant to deliver. And that is really exciting. A time of clear need is awesome. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But there is almost paralyzing uncertainty about what to do about it, um, in part because the problems that we're facing seem so big. Um, and We've run out of being able to simply use the creative acts of our predecessors. The world is so different. We've evolved so much, but now we're almost at this fracture where we're going to have to figure out something else that we have to do. Our set of creative acts, our approaches, to how we go forward, well, everything from how we do collection to what the nature of analysis is to the processes that we put in place to deliver the certainty that the nation demands. So um, this moment and this challenge of uncertainty is really where leadership steps in. Um, it's a time that we need leaders who can accomplish something. And I will tell you what leadership is not. Leadership is not simple convening authority. It sure as heck isn't title. It is not a compendium of activities and meetings that are held to discuss it. Um, leadership today is about accomplishment. And people, leaders who can do so, leaders who can chart a course and a way, are today's hottest commodity. Think about that. If you can be someone who can take us somewhere, you are today's hottest commodity. And here's the cool thing. Times like this of great need blow away bias. They just knock it out of the room. We have whole quotations made up, any port in a storm. These are the moments when the need is so clear when someone who can say, here's how we go, is a great moment, regardless of who you are, regardless of what you look like, regardless of almost anything else. The book Hidden Figures, cleverly portrayed in the movie, is a great example of that. We're talking about the, about the 50s and 60s. And who took us to the moon? I mean, great, we only heard about it now, which has its own thing. But who took us there? And for all the bias around it, who had the opportunity to do it? The most oppressed group of US citizens that we have ever had. And yet, in that moment of great need, they had that great opportunity when they took it. Um, if you want to break into leadership, um, deliver away. Um, 
three things that you have to do. Number one, it's not a time for philosophers, gang. You don't need people to be problem identifiers. You need to be able to have a vision in your head and then translate it into a set of actions that someone can follow. Because just vibrating with, we should be doing something, is not what leadership is about. Um, and you have to be willing to create a new way. Uh, to some form, one of my, the similar experiences in my life was a course I took at the Kennedy School back in the early 80s, and we reenacted the decision to commit troops to Vietnam. Everyone playing their role. With all the intelligence we had, with all the things that we knew, with the benefit of history, guess what we decided to do in 1980? We decided to recommit troops to Vietnam. And the reason was there were only bad choices on the table, so we chose one of them. I think this is a moment when we have only bad choices on the table, find a new choice. Being able to overcome impediments, a system that says that isn't what we can do, will carry us forward. Learn to make decisions. Uh, one of my favorite quotations is Amelia Earhart's. She says, the most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is just tenacity. Learn to, be a make, a to make a decision. Decision is a creative act. It involves a leap. Learn how to take that leap. And it really isn't about guts. It's just about work and the ability to have done so much work that you can understand the consequence of being wrong and whether you can bear it or not. And if you can bear it, go. And if you can't, do more work. And the third thing that is important right now is you must be a technologist and you must be a competent data swimmer. In 2018, beyond this notion that this technology that someone else does is going to kill us. Like cyber, every aspect of aspiration is going to go through technology. And leaders who cannot lead technology will not be great leaders. They can't be. They can't imagine it. So you must. And you're going to talk about, I'm not going to talk much more than that, but you're going to talk about a panel about getting more women in technology. One of the ways to do it is be the leader who demonstrates the value of it, not just the act of it. Because the things we know about us as women, we're pretty outcomey. That's why we don't play video games for hours and hours and hours <laughs> once we've won the game. It's like, why? Like a better score, right? <laughs> Like, I don't know, like a better score? What is that all about? Seriously, Jim, talk about my husband. Anyway. <laughs> so, time for leadership. Be a leader. It's a great way in right now, because if you can be it, no one is looking at anything other than that. That being said, my topic number two is we have some really natural advantages as women, if I'm grossly stereotypical in this environment. If it is a time that things are new, thinking differently, that's an advantage. If it's a interconnected world, being natural collaborators, pretty important, because insularity isn't going to work anymore. Not a single solution we have is going to be done within a single space. And so we're doing it. And in a time of great change, Empathy, that's what we need. Having a relationship with your people, understanding the perspective of the others, understanding that sometimes differences aren't conflict, but rather seeing a problem a different way. So we have some natural advantages at this time. Don't be afraid of that. You have to be true to who you are. I have spent my whole life telling, with people telling me how I needed to be. Don't be direct. Successful women don't have long hair. <laughs> yeah, right? You heard it. <laughs> my favorite was from another woman that said, Sue, you're only successful because you're like a guy. Which, which I know, right? And I can, well, no, I was going to say, and I can shoot a 15-foot fade away from the corner. <laughs> but truthfully, it's like six now. I can't, no 15, no 15 feet anymore. Um, 
Be who you are. The truth has its own sound. All the great leaders actually come from a place of truth. That will carry the day. Be that. Own that. And if you come from a place of truth, you will find that people allow you to be wrong because they know that you are only wrong in what you thought you should do, never small. And so they'll forgive it because all you have to do is find another. So this thing of truth, and one, everyone will know, but two, it's really powerful. But there's a combination to that, and that is, but leadership is actually attribute agnostic in terms of what it has to deliver. It has to deliver outcome. It has to bring people along. It has to be decisive and tough. And so even though you are going to be your authentic self, remember that your stylistic preferences are subordinate to what needs to be accomplished. Um, Bent Midler has a great quotation that says, uh, cherish forever what makes you unique, because you're really a yawn if it goes. <laughs> but I prefer to think about my time as an athlete, where I wanted to be on the court to play. And the truth is, the coach only cared about who would help them win. So you have to balance that. You have to be true to who you are, but you do have to deliver when you're in leadership positions. And just remember to balance those, I say. Um, here's the really great thing about women leaders. And when we achieve that, we lift all boats. Because the coolest thing is successful women leaders tend to be obvious in their difference. But their successes make difference OK for everybody. So the neatest thing that happens when we rise is people go, huh, I guess there's not one definition of excellence. So all the guys that are not descendants of white Civil War generals, <laughs> you have a way forward, too, because now people can see that difference still produces results. So even if you're not inspired by the moment to get into leadership, and if you're not really focused on yourself and being a loader, I will leader, I will tell you that the effect of difference in leadership is an additive effect. OK, point number three, so we can get to some questions. Um, thank you. Usually I feel like I could talk loud enough, regardless. But you have, you, right. <laughs> Wonderful differences. OK. Point three. Um, the importance of men as leaders and as allies. Um, uh, first things first. This is a blanket thank you to all the men in my life, some of whom are sitting in this room. You have inspired me, and led me, and taught me, and mentored me, and supported me, and partnered with me in everything I've done. My best mentors have been guys. Long ago, when we weren't even thinking about this, when I was one of two women in a 780-person office, the advice that was given to me then has been the most important carried through. I don't think we talk about this enough. So thanks. Um, you're important um, and necessary, and I am grateful. And let's not forget that in this conversation. When we talk about women joining the ranks, it's women joining the ranks. And that's important. OK. Um, three points about the importance of men. Um, the first one is the responsibility of the majority. Um, sorry, guys. You have that. Uh, and carry it. Enjoy it. Use it. And give it away. 
because you have to give things away before someone else has earned it in order for us to move forward. Um, teach, inspire, give, deliver. All the things that I talked about as leaders, you have disproportionate responsibility for that. Um, there's a great quotation by Ralph Waldo Emerson that says, our chief want in life um, is someone who makes us be who we can. Um, Gina Wariyama is a great example of that. People ask why Gino is so successful at the University of Connecticut and his women's basketball teams. He's got three important things. Number one, he can get any talent he wants. Number two, he's smart enough to attract humble talent. And I would articulate that women tend to be more examples of humble talent on a team than some others. And the third thing is, is he convinces everyone on his team that they can be great and he will set the limits of their greatness and he will help them get there. That's who you can be with these positions. Do that for your folks. But also understand that with all that accomplishment and all that, even the great men, even the good men can do, especially the great men and the good men, can do irreparable harm with casual comment or historic perspective that makes, in that one moment, all the other things that are possible make the people that work with them wonder. Best man in my life is uh, my dad. Uh, if you knew him and he were standing here, you'd say, oh, that explains so much. <laughs> uh, career naval officer. Um, went to the Naval Academy in 1950. Um, his granddaughter um, graduated in 2010 from the Naval Academy. And she is, he's got six grandchildren, she's his favorite. Really, seriously, when the other, <laughs> when the other grandchildren come into the house, they're like, where, where, are the, where are the pictures of us? I mean, my, <laughs> and I have two kids, by the way, and so her brother's like, yeah, well, she's great. But they're everywhere. He loves her the most. Sorry, Taylor, Steve. <laughs> Bobby, Maggie, Jay. Um, he does. And every picture that's not of her is of, of her husband. Because <laughs> he also went to the Naval Academy. He loves her the most, most of all. And, and he's so proud of me and so proud of her. Um, but he's got this one thing. The Naval Academy has one of the great, um, I'm going to say fight songs of all time. It's called Navy Blue and Gold, if you've ever been to a Navy sporting event and you hear the crowd singing, it, it's really powerful. Um, when women were introduced in the Naval Academy, they took this song and they changed five words. They changed it from college men to colleges. That's not quite right, but still, I admire the attempt. <laughs> and sailors, sailor men to sailors brave. That, that's all they did, change those words. My dad, will say over and over, I'm not singing the new version. <laughs> Seriously, Dad. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, so you don't think your granddaughter should be able to sing a song about her service and her academy. And you are going to say, the man she so admires, you are going to say, that you're drawing the line at that, because somehow you think that's wrong, because that's a change that's too much to bear. Guys, he is the best man. He is the most supportive dad. He loves her the most, and in that one teeny act, it almost says everything. Be careful about those things, really important. Last point. I'm such a sap. Just get over it. Um, <laughs> I don't think I can give a speech about that. Okay, so here, that, that's important. I can talk about technology probably without crying, but you know, what are you going to do? Here's, I don't know, unless it's really good technology, then I might. Then, he, then here's the last one. Um, inclusion of men in this conversation. 
I don't think we talk enough about the perspective of men in this conversation. Talk a lot about what they need to do. They talk a lot about what we need to have and all that stuff. Do we talk a lot about how they see it and how it feels to them and what it's like, what they might think going forward? We have to have that. My friend Margot got a call one day from a friend of hers who said, hey, I'm coming in town, can I stay at your house? And Margot said, well, I'm not going to be in town, but Rick's going to be here, so you can, of course, stay at our house. That's great. She went home and she told Rick. She said, Rick, Chris is coming in town. I told her it was, I'm not going to be here, but I told her it was OK to stay at the house. You know, that I'm totally fine with it, you know, whatever. And he said, Mate, what if I'm not fine with it? We talk in public-private partnership all the time about needing to consider the value proposition of both sides. Have we considered the value proposition of both sides in this conversation? So I think this is a really rich area for us to explore. And you guys have more time today than I do, but, but I'm going to work on affecting that in my place. OK, so that's it, all I have to say. Um, three big points, really important moment. And in important moments and great moments, leadership matters. Women have some real significant advantages, but you can't forget that those advantages still have to translate into results. And men bear responsibility and offer opportunity that will make this actually happen. I'd be delighted to take any questions if I don't blow your schedule up. I'm grateful to be here. I'm honored to be in your presence. What I'm also really honored to do is to feel like I know so many of you and be confident that uh, our future is in your hands and you're carrying our hopes and dreams. And you will do far more than I will ever have done with your actions, your decisions, and your moves going forward. Thank you so much. One question is all we have time for, but only if I answer in a tweet. Oh, you said five minutes. Wait a minute. How do, what do I do with this? The president CEO says one question, Sue. Maybe then she knows it takes me five minutes to answer any question. <laughs> Shut up. OK, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, hey. hey, Bonnie. Hi. You. you as well. And um, lead uh, engineer for the ODNI cloud effort. Woohoo! Um, I, I, I tell my DoD friends all the time because we're both looking at AI. Is if we hadn't done eyesight, we would have had to. So we got a way running start. Absolutely, absolutely. And you always being yourself has made such a tremendous difference in the effort and just an inspiration for all well, of thanks. us. Thanks. It's hard to be anything else. You know, I keep trying. Every morning I wake up and I say, <laughs> be so different, much fun and it just be around too. So doesn't, that's doesn't work out. A plus. My question for you is yes. this. Uh, what are some of the more systemic ways male advocates can make a difference? For example, what kinds of programs or policies might advocates advance, or have you experienced um, programs or policies that have made a difference for you, or would have made a difference if implemented? So that's a great question. And um, one of the things I'm leading right now is a task force um, kind of inspired by the Me Too movement for the intelligence community on those things that we can do to really make an environmental difference. Because I think we actually do a pretty good job of dealing with the real bums and real predators. We probably do a little less good job about making sure that we have an environment um, where no one has to choose between pursuing the mission they love and and being treated decently. And so we're working on that. So they'll come up with some specific things, and you'll hear from me probably in the next two months on those. Um, I think there's one probably the most impactful thing that our male allies can do is actually um, on the hoof. And that is, I think one of the things that makes the biggest difference is having the opportunity to do hard things early. And um, when we get challenges laid on us and we're looking for someone to take it on, it is really easy to go to the person that you always go to, or the person that thinks like you, or the person who you know, is in your cadre. I would say the most impactful thing is to think twice about who you're giving those opportunities to 
because those are the ones that are the building blocks of ability that are going to make later on huge gains. So I, if I were to choose one thing, I would just say that. And again, that's on the responsibility of the majority. It would be the easiest thing that everyone can do. It's just think twice. Because if you thought twice about it, you could find tons of people you could do it. And then stand by on the off chance that what they deliver isn't perfect the first time. Go, oh my gosh, and then kick them back into play. Don't take it away. Bonnie, that would be the easiest thing. Thanks. You bet. All right. What's the answer, Tish? Was that it? All right. Oh, we got two minutes. Okay. I can't, um, one, I'll get off the stage if you guys want to get onto the other program. Hi, Karen Hayes Ryan. It's great to see you. Um, uh, if you want to get to the other program. But two questions, each answered in a tweet. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, ma'am. actively engaged in not helping you move? How do you deal with a woman who is not actively, en actively engaged in keeping you down? Um, I wish I were as clever as Madeleine Albright, <laughs> and who said that there is a special place in hell for women who don't help other women. Um, I would just say I treat it the same as as anyone else. Is you're either you're either going to be relevant or or I'm going to move past you. Um, I'm pretty agnostic about um, achievement because I think that's the obligation of my position. Um, I'll I'll of course try to mentor, but in the position I am right now, we've got to move. And so I would just say that if you're not helping, you're not going to be relevant. And, and I will deal with bad consequence separately, but not relevant is the biggest detriment to being chosen for other things in the future. And I think you would say that about all the women. If you just talk to your tables and you say, well, how are all these amazing women and men in the room? It would be because they were always relevant. Thanks. All right, that's it. Um, thank you so much. You got me? Okay. So um, the, uh, we told Sue we'd have her out of here at uh, 845. Uh, really, who I told would have, have her out of here at 845 was Betty. Okay. So and we're all afraid. <laughs> and so I'm not going to get a cross purpose with Betty. We'll get you out of here on time. But the, uh, we wanted to say thanks. Uh, the good news is you've been so generous of your time with ENSA and so supportive, so thank you. The bad news is you've done so many things we've run out of thank you gifts for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You've got. And I've, and I've run out of thank you gifts to give you too. So call it good. But we have. But we've given you the candy dish. We've given you the Insa M and M's. We've we've given you the coaster. We've given you the coveted Insa coin. You've got one of those. Okay. But the but we also want to see one of these coins in the in the trophy case out at uh, DNI one of these days. Okay. Okay. You give me a hot spare okay. so that I can okay. You, my you can do that one. Okay. Okay. But the other thing uh, that I'll just remind you that uh, you know Tish mentioned it up front, but uh, the the best thank you gift we could think of today was a donation to Girls Inc. And I will uh, remind you a wonderful charity that inspires all girls to be strong, smart, and bold like you. So thanks, thanks. again. <laughs>